Ed not only fought for Chinatown, he would get married there. On June 20, 1980, he and Anita exchanged wedding vows at the Salvation Army Church on Powell Street. My mom is gorgeous. She, you know, she's gorgeous today and in her youth was, you know, uh, beautiful. And she really could have dated anybody, I feel. Uh, but I think what my dad had on everybody was just his ability to, like, make her crack up. In 1982, their first daughter, Tanya, was born. Three years later came Brianna. He was really just fun all the time. Every time he came home, like, we, like, you know, it was really delightful whenever he came home. Like, it was sort of like time for, like, lightheartedness and just, like, having fun, even though he usually came home pretty late at night. My mom did a lot of the heavy lifting of raising our family when we were young because my dad was so busy. I think, you know, we would really want him to come home for dinner and he would say, oh, I'll be home by eight o'clock. And it was normal for eight o'clock to mean midnight. It was hard. It was really hard for me. Um, and I could tell it was hard for my mom too. While a fourth of San Francisco's population is Chinese, it had been woefully underrepresented in city politics. But that began to change in the late 80s when Mayor Art Agnos took notice of Ed and hired him to head up a new whistleblower division. And I knew when I became mayor that it was no longer going to be sufficient to recognize the Chinese American community by coming to Chinese New Year's dinner parties, saying gong hai fat choy, and taking a few pictures and leaving. That was the old world. And the new world that was represented by Ed Lee was we had to be far more proactive in empowering the Chinese community. And we all knew that it would not be long before there would be Chinese officials elected in every category. And believe me, from the time of the late 70s to the present day, that's evidenced itself, none more dramatic than Ed Lee's ascendancy to one of America's most significant cities, San Francisco. I see your favorite color is black. Are you like all into vampires or something? Something like that. You come to daddy. Told me that everything was gonna be okay, that we would be strong again, and that she sent for me when everything got better.
Although President Reagan acknowledged that the incarceration of Japanese Americans was a mistake, he stopped short of calling it what it really was, a scandal of epic proportions. Government lawyers intentionally destroyed and altered and suppressed evidence regarding the loyalty of Japanese Americans. Government lawyers also presented to the court false evidence regarding the commission by Japanese Americans of acts of espionage. Acts that the government knew to be false. It was covered up, but during my few years of doing research at the archives, I found the lost tenth copy of the DeWitt report. The cases that legalized and legitimized the incarceration of these Americans was false. It was a fraud. Today, more than ever, America needs to know the truth. They need to know that not only were Japanese Americans rounded up and incarcerated based on completely false information, but the government knew it, and these facts were deliberately covered up for decades. It's time for this country to be reminded of the truth and that facts matter. They should have mattered in 1942, and they should matter today. Constitution indeed protect all of us regardless of race or culture. Do our rights remain inalienable even in times of stress? I'm pleased to bring you here to announce my nomination of Norm Mineta to be the 33rd Secretary of Commerce. I thank him for accepting my invitation to serve again. Well, one of the important things about Norm's experience is it reminds us that sometimes we lose our soul as a nation. That the notion of uh, all equal under God sometimes disappears. And 9-11 uh, certainly challenged that premise. And in some ways, I, I, uh, Norm's example uh, inspired me. Whereas I didn't want our country to do to others what had happened to Norm. to be visionary in terms of where are we going in the future and how do we get there.